Hi everyone, thank you um, for attending tonight. If you are attending live on a Sunday evening here as a part of our uh, Blues From Home uh, regular schedule, tonight we have uh, a More Than An Athlete session, uh, our second More Than An Athlete session. You're uh, uh, extremely lucky because last week was a, a cooking and food pre food preparation session ran by myself, and it was uh, it was it was it was fun for me. Um, I don't know how educational it was for you guys as athletes, but um, I expect that tonight will be very much the other end of the scale, where this will be of great value to particularly our under 16s, maybe some of our older under 14s, but our 16s, 18s and any under 21s that wanted to tune in or, or come and watch this video once it's been recorded and uploaded. So um, I'll hand things over tonight to Linda from El Bell Recruitment. She's going to take us through uh, some resume and interview preparation. So in terms of starting to think about casual work, how to prepare your um, CV and how to prepare yourself um, for that process. So, you know, uh, application letters, writing your CV, what to put on your CV, what to include, and, and then how to prepare and, and be successful in that interview process, which I think is something I was saying to Linda just before we started the meeting, if I was a junior again, and, and I had my time again, I would love to have had access to something like this. It's not something that I think really focused on in, in general sort of day-to-day -day school um, curriculum, but it is something that's extremely valuable and we're really lucky to have uh, Linda with us tonight. So Linda, thank you very much for jumping on and, and helping out our juniors tonight. Thank you very much, Jared. So I wanted to talk, like Jared mentioned, in regards to resume and interview preparation. Um, some of you might be working casual at the moment or planning to go into casual work later this year or next year. So it's important because the market has changed substantially in regards to where we sit. So just so you've got the best foot forward when you go out there into the marketplace, so you have your best chances of gaining employment. My background, I suppose I've been in recruitment for 20 odd years. I started my own business, LB Recruitment, about 14 years ago. We predominantly look after administrative, customer service, sales, all office-based roles. So the types of roles that you're probably going to be looking for, we definitely do that. So we definitely know what we're looking for in terms of resumes and seeing candidates who are going into the workforce for the first time. So hopefully, look, there is a bit of information here. Hopefully it's beneficial um, and hopefully I won't take up too much of your time. Um, first off, so I've prepared a little bit of a snapshot in terms of what we look for and what will possibly help you out. So when we're looking to employ people, um, what recruiters ideally look for. So in the application, what we are looking for is that you are addressing the key selection criteria. So if the ad is asking you to have Microsoft Office skills or to have a particular program, to make sure that you include that in your covering letter or to include that information in your resume. Um, the covering letter is addressed to the right person. So there are numerous times and it seems pretty straightforward that I've been called the wrong person or I've been called Mr. Smith. So it's just not a good look. Um, relevant experience. So even though your previous experience might all be working at Target or working at McDonald's, it is all customer service skills. So highlight the customer service skills that you do have because that's going to be relevant for your next role. Um, relevant details include on your resume, so like covered, and make sure you do the skull check. So there really isn't any excuse to have spelling errors on a CV because we're all on the computers these days. So make sure you just double check your work. Um, what we look for in the interview itself. So make sure you're punctual. So one of my girls actually says in the office, if you're on time, you're late. So make sure that you're always there. And I always tell people get there about five, 10 minutes early. Um, it just gives you enough time whether you're driving to find a car spot, get in there, always, always, always turn up five, 10 minutes early. Um, dress professionally. So even if you are going for a role in retail or if it's in food services, don't wear jeans, don't wear casual attire, always dress up that little bit extra to what you probably normally would. It is still that old theory of first impressions count. So if you show up and that you show that you've put in a little bit of effort, it's always going to be looked upon a lot more favourably than someone that's turning up in summer in shorts and 
films and whatever it might be. Be prepared for the interview. So yes, it might be a position in retail, but be prepared about the company. Know what they do, know what the role is, have some good, clear questions ready for that recruiter or that HR person. Um, firm, strong handshake, which you can't do at the moment, but when we're out of COVID, when you do handshake, make sure it's a firm, a strong handshake when we're back in normal times. And also eye contact, that's probably a really important one. So I, in normal times, interview numerous people on a daily basis. And what I do look for is someone who can look me in the eye. Um, I, and it is that going back to basis things that if I ask someone a question and they start looking all over the place, it does come back to, or are they telling me the truth? Are they trying to think of an answer? Eye contact is just terribly important. Okay. Hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, resume writing tips. So a few tips to actually include on your resume. So when you're preparing it, when I see resumes, so where the market sits at the moment, it is a very competitive marketplace. So we probably get hundreds and hundreds of CVs for one particular role. So when we're scanning through CVs, we want to make sure that they do address what I'm looking for. There is no spelling errors. They're addressing me by my right name. Um, and they have these types of points on there. So the resume, you've got to make sure it's concise. So don't have a resume that's 10 pages long. A resume probably for what you guys are all looking for should only be probably two, three pages max. So it should be really clear, really concise because recruiters and HR people don't have time to look through pages and pages of information about you. As much as we'd like to, we just don't have the time to. Make sure your resume is factual and accurate. So if the role is something that you're really looking for and you really want to do that position, but they want um, experience with a particular software program or experience working somewhere, don't write on your resume that you've done it if you haven't actually done that before. Um, it might get you there, but you will be found out and it's not gonna end well. Um, so make sure that it is factual, make sure that it's accurate um, and sell the points that you do have the experience in. Um, always put your resume in a positive manner. So what we say with that is don't use negative words in your CV. So don't say I can't do whatever it might be. Always highlight what you can do. Always highlight your strengths. Um, goes into my next point. Highlight skills and strengths. So like mentioned. Always in your resume, use bullet points. So never use paragraphs or never use wordy sentences. Um, like mentioned, we read so many resumes on a daily basis and all I'm looking for is clear words. So particular words, I'll look at a CV and it will make me read it for longer. So when I get a CV that has just paragraphs of words, it makes it really hard for a recruiter or a HR person to read. So the best chance you're gonna get is to make sure that it's all in bullet points and it's clear and it's to the point. Um, write your achievements for each role. So if you've worked at Target or if you've worked at uh, Pizza Hut or if you've worked somewhere, what are the key achievements that you've done in that position? So did you get a customer service award? Did you solve a particular problem? Did you um, create a new process? So whatever it might have been, if you've done, you know, basketball refing, what did you do? What was a good achievement that you've achieved or that you've received recognition for? So put all that information in your CV. Things not to include in your resume, like mentioned, don't use the lengthy paragraphs. So make sure it's all bullet pointed. Don't mention weaknesses. So like I discussed, always put it on a positive note and always highlight what your experience is and what you can do. Like mentioned also, don't lie or exaggerate. So if you've got the skills, absolutely put them in there, but don't write something if you haven't done it. 
Um, don't use acronyms or industry-based jargon. So in basketball, there might be acronyms that you might use for whatever it might be. Don't put that in your CV because you will know what it means, but the HR person or the recruiter for that particular company that you're applying for might not have any idea of what you're talking about. So always use the proper wording and don't use um, short and firm, short and firm forms of the word. Um, and again, spell check your CV, 100%. So this is probably really blurry, but I can get a better copy um, across to Jared. So this is an example of a resume. So this is only one and a half pages. This top bit, your name or your contact details. So if you've got a LinkedIn profile, put it in there. With the contact details, one really good point that I could probably give to you is make sure you've got a professional email address. So I see lots of email addresses that are probably inappropriate um, for professional workplaces and you can have funny names and you can have whatever it might be for your friends. But when you're going to be applying for work, make sure it's a professional email. So it could be your name at Gmail, it could be your initials at Gmail, but not something like I'm awesome at basketball at gmail.com. Um, another thing is that if you do have a Facebook profile um, or if you do have any social media platforms, when you start applying for work, make them private because anything online at the moment will get looked up. So when we apply, when we have candidates, we will on more times than not these days, look at their Facebook profile to just get a bit of an understanding about what their hobbies are, what they do. And if you've got photos on there, or if you've got things on there that you think just might not be great for a future employer to see, make sure you make your whole profile private. So anything that I've got online myself personally is completely private. Underneath your contact details, put a little bit of a summary. So I'm really strong at customer service. I thrive on challenges. I'm really looking for the, my next career move. Education. So if you're currently at university or VCE, um, put in the date that you finished and what you were doing, what you've achieved. Skills and attributes. So the first little part is computer skills. So any computer skills that you've got, so whether it's Microsoft Office, Adobe Photoshop, you've got Maya, Publisher, whatever it might be, add those computer skills in there. Um, attributes, so highly organized, if you're bilingual, um, excellent communication skills, whatever it might be, chuck them all into your attributes. Interests. I would put in interest for this one, particularly for those starting out into the workforce or first or second job, because it's a point of a communication starter for the recruiter or the HR person when they interview you. So they can talk to you about basketball, they can talk to you about cooking or doing puzzles or whatever it might be. Then your experience. So with the experience, which is a really important part, one thing that I'll always say to people is, Never put just the year, always put the month and the year that you start and the month and the year that you finish or current or now or present if you're still working there. A lot of times I'll see CVs and it will have 2019 to 2020 work to McDonald's customer service, which is fine. But then I say by having 2019 to 2020, could be two weeks that you started there in December and finished in January, or it could be a full two years. It doesn't actually tell me the story of how long you've been there unless you have the months. So a really thing, important thing to take away from this, if nothing else, make sure you put the months on your CV as well as the years. Um, so put the company name, the position, and then probably four to five bullet points of what you were responsible for in that actual position. Um, again, the achievement, and you probably only need one achievement, and it could be you um, received a customer service award, um, you received positive feedback, whatever it might be. 
Um, and again, the next role that you've had. And if it's only one, put in your only experience. If you've done volunteer work, if you've done casual employment, whatever it might be, put all the experience you've got into that experience area. Um, references, never put your references on your CV. Um, always note down reference will, references will be provided upon request. Um, and the reason for this is probably around privacy these days, because you don't want your referees to be called constantly. Um, if you are applying to through a recruiter, you don't want that recruiter to call up that company, getting a reference for you, and then you might not get the job, and then to call that next person, and then to get five calls. So when you're finally ready for that perfect job, unfortunately, that reference has, has already received so many calls that they're just not in the right headspace to answer those questions. So make sure you don't put the details and only put it upon request. Um, okay. Cover letter. Why a cover letter is important. So cover letters, yes, they are important. And yes, I would always advise you to do them. But I would still probably say put more emphasis and more time into your resume. Because your resume is going to be focused on and read a lot more than what your covering letter. But your covering letter is important. Um, it's a letter of introduction. So it's sort of if there's something on your CV that to me doesn't make sense, I'll then go back to your covering letter and work out, okay, you've had a big gap in your CV because you were traveling overseas or because you went on holidays or whatever it might be. So it usually explains what you've been doing. And like mentioned, it's your introduction. It's a bit of a selling mechanism. So this is the only time you probably use paragraphs as opposed to dot points. So this is when you sell yourself, why you're wanting to work at Target, why you want this opportunity, what you can do and what you can bring to that employer. Um, what we usually say, it's sort of the entree before the main meal. So this is like your little teaser before we get to your resume. Um, a good thing for it, it's an example of your writing skills, if nothing else. So it shows us as recruiters and HR people that you can construct sentences that you can construct, um, paragraphs that you have a good grasp of the English language, um, really strong written communication skills. Um, and it shows if your skills match what the actual role is. Um, a few little covering letter tips. So include your contact details. So it's a formal letter, essentially. Address the letters to the correct person, like mentioned. Mention your name, um, mention the name of the position you're applying for. So don't make it a generic um, covering letter. It should be tailored for each position that you are applying for. Um, be specific about the skill set, so what you can do. Again, like we've said, don't be negative. So focus on the skills that you do have. Don't focus on what you can't do. Um, always double check everything. So it goes back to spelling. Um, double check everything because... One thing when I do pass CVs on to people, if they say I've got really strong attention to detail, but then there's a lot of spelling errors um, in your CV. So make sure things are double checked. Um, don't focus on what you don't focus on what you want, focus on what you can offer. So what you can bring to this employer, not just why you want the job. Um, and don't be casual in your English. So don't use um, text message sort of talk, be professional. This is a professional letter. Um, interviews, so the last little part that I wanna talk about before I take up too much of your time is the interview process. So there are a couple of different types of interviews that can happen um, through this process. So one and more commonly is a structured interview. And that could be including behavioural-based interviewing. So I do a lot of this type of interviewing and it's usually one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two. -on and they will ask a lot of questions, the interviewer, in terms of provide me an example of when you've had to deal with difficult situations or how would you manage a situation that involved X, Y, Z. So it's not just yes and no questions. It's questions that will actually make you 
think about examples and make you give really in-depth information to prove to that recruiter and that HR person that you do have the skills for this role. Um, panel interviews, you might be in front of two, three or four different people and they will have different positions in that company. So one will be the HR person, one might be your direct manager and one might be an operations manager. So what will happen, one will usually ask a lot of the questions, but they will all talk about that interview afterwards um, and assess your suitability for the role. Uh, telephone interviews, that is usually the screening process. So we'll do a quick telephone interview, we'll deem you suitable for the position and then we'll bring you in for that face-to-face -face interview. And what happens a lot these days is obviously teleconference and Zoom interviews. So very similar to structured interviews, all the questions are the same but we're just doing it via Zoom. Um, and the last slide that I've got is just a couple of example interview questions. So this will go up obviously onto the website and it's good sort of just as a point of reference and to prepare for the interview. So when I'm sending my candidates who I'm representing across to a client, I'll always give them a list of these type of questions because I want them to be prepared. So these aren't always going to be asked at an interview, but they're good ones to prepare for interview with. So tell me about yourself. So make sure that you can articulate a little bit about yourself and why you want the position. Um, why, do you want this, why do you want to leave your current role? So if you are currently working casually somewhere, why do you want to leave? Um, what are your weaknesses? So everyone has strengths and everyone has weaknesses, but make sure that you are prepared. So don't, you know, don't sit there and constantly think about the answers. Make sure you've got clear, succinct answers for these, some of these questions. Um, what do you know about our company? So make sure that you've researched that company you're going to, you know, learn about the culture there or learn about opportunities that they do have because that's why you want to work there. Um, why should I hire you? Why are you going to be the best employee for this position? Um, what past accomplishments gave you satisfaction? Why do you want this job? How do you handle pressure and stress? Explain how you overcame a major obstacle. Where do you see yourself in 5, 10, 15 years from now? So like mentioned, these aren't questions that are always going to be asked, but if you have example answers for these, they will probably cover most of the questions you will get asked at interview. So hopefully that has given you a little bit of a snapshot in terms of covering letters, resumes and interviews. And hopefully that will give you some skills when you go that next stage, stage to try and find some work. Thank you. Awesome, Linda. That's fantastic. Thank you for that. Um, we haven't had any questions in the chat, but I might just, um, just hold for a couple of minutes there quickly to sure. see um, if we do have any come up. That was um, that was terrific. Really, really informative, um, and and to the point. I think um, for our juniors, especially, a lot of their experience does come through initially through yep. um, sometimes refereeing um, yep. within the association. I know a lot of our juniors too currently are starting to get some casual work coaching in our programs, which is terrific. Um, so yeah, including examples about how they can transition. Um, I guess yep. that terminology and and communicate the skills that they've used thinking they may think oh well that's not really relevant to a job that I might be going for in the future and they couldn't be more wrong because Correct. like yeah. you said there's customer service um, aspects to all of that I see it regularly with our coaches in our programs they're constantly having to communicate with parents straight after the sessions yeah um, so they're still having to there's still that you know customer service communication ability um, and we're really lucky in our uh, in our junior ranks with our, with our kids. They, they, they do really grasp those opportunities to coach as much as they possibly can. So they've gained some valuable experience, um, but you've really helped in terms of how that might translate to uh, further employment opportunities down the line for them. So we really appreciate that. No, that's absolutely fine. But like mentioned, yeah, hopefully this just gives a few little tips that might be able to help everyone. Yep. No, absolutely. If you're happy to, are you happy to send through that document? Or, or I will send that through and I'll send through a clear one of the example resume. So happy for awesome. you to put all that online. 
Fantastic. That'll that'll be uploaded for um, anyone that's watching this session, um, the recording of this session. That will be uploaded to the same place you can find this recording. So in our interactive calendar, underneath it, there is a place, a, a link that you can click to download any of the resources that we use during any of these sessions. So um, if you are watching this session tomorrow or later in the week, um, just know that you can go and, and read through these, um, this information and also obviously download that um, example CV or resume, which is, which is really, really valuable, giving you that template to get started. Um, so yeah, Linda, I can't, uh, I haven't got any questions coming through at the moment and I'm conscious of um, letting you get back to your Sunday evening as well. No, that's um, fine. So we, uh, we might wrap things up there. I, again, I really appreciate you jumping on. Um, and again, we'll, we'll pass on your information. Obviously, L Bell Recruitment, um, they, they help us out at FDBA. Um, really, really good sort of partners for us in terms of that space. And um, you guys, if anyone is watching this and needs any extra help, we'll make sure that um, that information is passed on and you can get in contact with Linda and her team as well. So... Thank you again for giving up your time tonight. We, we really appreciate it. It's really, really valuable for our club and our members. So thank you. No problems at all. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. No worries. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. We will uh, finish up there and, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you all again soon. Thank you.